I'm uh, here with Bruce this morning uh, to talk to him mostly about his uh, Fiat Abarth. Um, very cool little Italian car um, and we'll show you a little bit more of that in a minute but we're just going to have a very quick look at some of his other cars. Um, Bruce loves collecting cars <laughs> and we've got it's not really an eclectic collection, there's quite a, quite a good theme running through them. Yeah, there's um, sort of the European, yeah. um, British sort of uh, comp composition to the collection. Um, one of this uh, collection being an MG, um, which is a rare RV8 version. Yeah. Um, one of only four in New Zealand in this particular configuration. Uh, which is Oxford blue. Um, we fitted the blue top to it. Um, did the clear lenses on the front and on the body. Right, uh, yeah. Which happened to be original mini ah, yeah, ones yeah. anyway, so that's quite an easy option. To yeah, do yeah. Very um, special wheels on these, only made for the MGRV8s and so consequently quite rare mm. and often people will put the um, uh, alloy wheels on you know as a option to save the original wheels yeah store the wheels um, yeah so those you know the uh, mini light style which looks quite cool on these um, so that you know they've got a, a second set of wheels basically to preserve the originals mm. um, I mean, this, this car's been well looked after because we've always garaged it and um, on whatever trips that we've had, you know, it's, it's been looked after no matter what. Mm. Lots of modifications on this one because we did suspension modification, adjustable uh, front and rear, uh, trailing arms at the back. Uh, quite, it's quite a powerful car with the four-litre mm. Rover V8 in it, mm. and five-speed manual gearbox. And, of course, 330Ci Cabriolet, yep. which yep. New Zealand new car. Yep. We've had this quite a long time, and um, it's a really delightful car to drive. Yeah, it's I bet. So solid and so um, smooth with that three-litre motor. Um, and of course, when I bought it, um, the previous owners had done a wonderful job of looking after it. So it was just a matter of buying it and doing the same, caring for the car. Yeah. And um, it's it's just really neat to drive because um, they're getting a bit rare now. Yeah. A lot of people, unfortunately, don't look after them, and of course, the the soft top is, you know, vulnerable yeah. if it's not garaged. Is this covered. the original top? Original top. Incredible condition, yeah. It's like so. It, it is down to the previous owners, you know, deciding that they wanted to love the car. Yeah. And possibly, like a lot of these sort of vehicles, it's been a second car in the garage. Yeah. So not an everyday car, and of course it certainly isn't for us. Cause, um, I only drive it, you know, perhaps during the summer months and when we go to the beach. Mm, yeah. Um, and it's. Onto the Jensen, which yeah. um, everybody sort of looks at it and oh. thinks, "Wow!" You know, yeah, it's oh, they're defi cool. definitely a wow car. Um, and they're rare. The um, the factory only produced six thousand of the interceptors yeah. in total, and there's three thousand left on the road around the world. So that's pretty good going. Um, this car. Had, had some restoration work, but only um, you know what it needed. Um, it was a pretty sound car to begin with, and I bought this car sight unseen. Uh, it was in Christchurch, and flew to Christchurch and drove it back. Uh, not without some drama, because it decided to throw the drive belt, because um, the um, air conditioning unit was. Um, not not working, so it snapped the belt. Ah. Um, but that was an easy fix. Yeah, in lots yeah, of ways. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to put you mm. off the road. 
And Too of course much. it's got its wonderful um, party trick, which is the huge glass. Yeah. <laughs> When I was here catching up with Bruce last time, we were talking about failing um, tailgate struts, how they run out of gas and it don't work anymore, but these guys came up with a, an idea that works and has kept working. Yes, it's, I mean, it's just two, two links, yeah. um, but they've been engineered in such a way that when you break them, um, you know, it just, it's soft, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that you lose control of the, yeah. the weight of the, the, the rear hatch and window, which is a lot of glass, yeah. but of course the thing is that if you do let it go from after breaking that um, system, it will close itself. Quite incredible. And yeah. so it, it, it's engineered. Yeah. Um, I think that's the word, isn't it? <laughs> being a Mark III, it's got the ginormous engine, which yep. is 7.2 litres of Chrysler V8. Crikey. Um, so we drive the Rolls Royce for economy, basically. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you get 12 miles to the gallon out of that and only 8 out of this. <laughs> is this the Hemi? Is it the. Yes. Yeah. It's um, probably the only. Thing that's a bit vintage about it now in terms of driving it is the three-speed automatic which um, is a it's a torque flight which is indestructible um, but uh, when they did some of the um, rebuilds on these as uh, often happens that you you can actually send the cars back to the UK and a company there will completely rebuild the car and upgrade it uh, come with fatter wheels and bigger brakes uh -huh. and you know they'll put a, a Chevy Corvette motor in uh -huh. it, 5 litre, which is still immensely powerful yeah. but with a bit more economy yeah. um, being uh, fuel injected. Yeah. And, and these have got a huge Carter carburetor on them with three, four downdrafts yeah. in it so it, it likes to drink fuel all yeah, the time. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as being Concorde goes, if you send it back to the actual factory and have work done on it, do they still accept them as being, you know, fa um, factory original or no, sort of no, like that, with the, an exception? That, that's why the value of this car is still very high mm. <coughs> because it's an original car. Mm. And um, I probably, 20 years ago when I bought the car, thought that the $37,000 that I paid for it was an enormous amount of money, mm -hmm. which it, it was at the time, mm -hmm. um, because it was never going to be an everyday car. Yeah, it was. It was just an addition. Yeah, they yeah. they are selling, you know, well in excess of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars these days, mm. and oftentimes into the two hundred thousands if they're really, really fantastic condition. Yeah, um, this is still only done seventy five thousand miles, which is pretty low. Yeah. Um, but um, some people have restored them back to the original state, um, and they, they are exquisite. You know, they they really are something which um, responds to um, detailed restoration, mm. which they need because they're they're a hand built car. Yeah. So you've got to do a lot of hand finishing to get them perfect. Yeah. Um, all all these body panels were hand finished at the factory. Um, because the, the the front is enclosed with the the bonnet lifting forward, so everything's leaded at the front. So a lot of hand finishing. No two are the same. You know, you look at another Jensen Interceptor, and it's, there's just slight variations. Might be different wing mirrors, or you know, because they they were they were a car that was hand built. So if there was a supply of Jaguar mirrors or Mercedes mirrors sitting on the shelf, it would depend on the build of that particular car, yep. what would end up on it. Ah. Um, and of course the thing is that um, people say to me about, you know, getting bits for the car because obviously things wear out, but they're immensely um, easy to, to maintain. Um, we have Jensen Parts New Zealand, um, Phil Barker who runs that, has everything you'd want uh, for your Jensen and even rare parts now you know are getting remanufactured 
Um, things like the door handles, which were originally very, very fragile, to say, were just muck metal. These have been recast out of a solid billet. Yeah. And so um, people spend the extra dollars to, you know, put something back on the car that's better than perhaps original, yeah. although still looking original. Yeah, yeah. So they've, over time, they've sort of been refined. Yeah. I've always loved yeah. the dashboard on these because, you know, they're, they're just so outrageous with their... Um, oh, yeah. Their well, the dials. Dials. You know, they seem to go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it would have been a very advanced car for its day with yeah. air conditioning, electric windows, um, all of those aspects in 1971 were pretty non-existent yeah. in a standard car. What would have been its competitor, like um, Aston Martins back in that era, or, you know, around... Yes, because a, a hand-built... Yeah. Um, it was probably um, similar money. Mm. Um, an E-Type Jag was, I think, about £2,000 at the time, um, but a Jensen was double that. So, you know, that's why... Um, you know, you, you ended up with rock stars and, and um, uh, prize fighters buying them because they were the only people that had the money to yeah. do so. Yeah. Um, so they, they were an expensive motor car, twice the price of an E-Type Jag, oh. um, but they, they were a completely different statement in terms of style mm. compared to, say, the E-Type Jag. Um, two, a two plus two, you've got two seats in the back, yeah. although fairly limited, but um, yeah, yeah. people have been known to travel in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just a, an amazing sort of car. It's a very glamorous car to drive, um, because when you see that profile and the reflection in a, in a window if you're driving through yeah. town or something, yeah. it's like, wow, yeah. look at the line of that oh, car. beautiful lines, it just yeah. has, has that um, flow right through the body. They've got that, mm. that motion. Yeah, sort of in yeah, the design, you know. That yeah, goes. I mean, even the rake on that window. I yeah. Mean, no car, the contemporary car at the time even, probably had yeah. quite a point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so even getting in and out of the car, it, it's a different feel. And when you're in that seat, you're looking through that rear vision mirror um, down that body, mm. uh, and it, it's, it's quite different. You know, if you'd been in your, um, you know, Mark One Cortina at the time, um, it would have, you know, it would have been fairly um, mediocre in terms of what you were driving. Yeah. But you got in this, and hello, it yeah. was <laughs> something pretty special. Yeah. And they were not averse to stealing parts from different places. This is off a Maserati, right. um, the side light, and so consequently they're very expensive to replace. Ah. <laughs> um, and the FF version, which is the four-wheel drive um, uh, Ferguson Formula, um, was a slightly longer car by four inches. Um, had four-wheel drive and anti-locking brakes 20 years before wow. Audi. Yeah. Um, they had a, an extra grille, so that is always a visible um, um, note for the, the Ferguson Formula cars. Yeah. And they did have a, a longer crease in the bonnet bulge um, to accommodate the fact that there was the extra length. Ah. And then the little chrome finisher, which they had, was also stolen from Maserati. Ah. But it just perfectly lined up, you know, in terms of that shape. Um, what's also interesting is that the body pressings, um, it, you can tell an original bonnet that hasn't been touched because the lines finish differently. This one is longer than the other. Ah. Um, and it's, so that's an original body, body pressing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oftentimes people have added in the crease if they've restored a car, ah. and, which is incorrect. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So little detail. Yeah. Um, people often think that it's a, it's a, instead of a Jensen, it's an Aston Martin because the that Art Deco sort of style yeah. echoes the Aston Martin look. Yeah, that's sort of like um, why I sort of wondered yeah. with around the era if that, if that was sort of the comparison at I the suppose, time. I so, suppose the yeah. thing is that because they were English hand-built cars, the Aston would be its closest, um, you know, pairing yeah. in terms of a, a, 
another option for yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but I think I think the the Jensen it just had that extra amount of styling from the touring um, company in Milan when they did the design um, that it's it's remained a bit timeless. You know, it has a there's a simplicity of line, even though it is quite a complex car. Mm. And um, and even even the detail, the grill is um, it's an alloy. It's all being cast. Wow. Um, so you know that that's an expensive way of building a car. Um, a, a lot of the, the pieces on the car are handmade or cast, and so like the door handles. Mm. Um, so it means that. You know, you, you didn't just have a, a latch, you know, which could break off or wear out. It was it was something pretty pretty beautifully made right from the, the word go. Yeah, crafted. And then Rolls Royce. Uh, this is a Silver Spirit. So this is um, last year of the carburetor cars. Yeah. So we went to fuel injection after this. Uh, so 19. 89. Yep. And um, this this car is one of three new sold in New Zealand that year. And I saw the car new in the showroom in Auckland and marvelled at the size of the wheels, thinking, oh my God, those are the biggest wheels I've ever seen on a car. Um, they don't seem so big anymore, perhaps, but um, they, were, they were still pretty incredible. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a beautifully built car. It's, you know... Has all that detail of hand finishing, the, the chrome, you know, the quality of the chrome, yeah. triple plated, um, the leather interior still like new, yeah. um, all all those details, you know, which is what a Rolls Royce is all about. Sometimes yeah. it's just the quality of the build and the yeah. quality of the materials, definitely. Um, and it's a great car to drive because it's so reliable. It's got a great big six point seven five liter motor. Yeah. Uh, which I think I mentioned before does about 12 miles a gallon. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a cheap car to drive, but it's, it's certainly something on an event when you do drive. Yeah. People, you know, they they know what it is and they they get it. They get the the aspect of you know you're driving something which is pretty special. Mm. Uh, and they look at the spirit of ecstasy on the radiator and yeah. think, wow, you know, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, they're they're awesome. <laughs> A and special thing. I think even the Phantom today, um, some some aspects of the, the new Rolls Royces, they're, they're a modern car. This is going to always have that aspect of being a bit of a classic, you know, right from the day that it was built. Yeah. Um, and it's, I guess, for a lot of people, the epitome of whatever they would want to own. Um, the reality is, of course, that while they're not expensive to buy initially. It's the cost of keeping them on the road. Because yeah. um, we, you know, we bought the car locally at Waihee. It was part of a collection, Ken Hogg's collection of cars, and that was sold um, uh, and videoed uh, for television on Going Going Gone. That sold the majority of the collection on the um, the day of the auction, but not the three Rolls Royces that he had. And so we negotiated after the fact. And um, it wasn't expensive, but straight away it required work because it had been sitting for two years in the collection. So suspension, which is, you know, the oil-filled spheres, um, which give the self-leveling at the rear, um, drive belts, any, any hoses and so forth that um, we replaced were done because of you know, just preventive maintenance, and it's it's been fantastic the whole time we've owned it. You never let us down. So. You were saying all the drive belts for the an ancillaries and that are all doubled. They've doubled everything for. Yeah, there's yeah. redundancy on everything. Yeah. Um, so when I ordered a set, because we were going to the South Island for a big trip, and I thought, well, we'll replace those before we go. Um, so all the, all of the belts um, have two running. So um, basically, you don't have the embarrassment of the Rolls Royce stuck behind, uh, stuck behind a, a tow truck, or just good for Rolls Royce. Yeah, you know, they don't want to sitting on the side of the road, broken down. Yeah, it's not a good look. Not a good look. So, you know, it, and 
having said that, none of the belts are broken, but then I suppose it is down to maintenance on a lot of things. For sure. Yeah. And so being being able to drive to the South Island and do, you know, five thousand kilometres uh, and never miss a beat, yeah. that's pretty good going. I usually go annually to the South Island. My sister lives in Methra. Um, so we've often taken the Rolls Royce for that big jaunt. Um, and so you have to save up a little for yeah. fuel. <laughs> um, Plan ahead. And, and then you yeah. just, you know, you go quietly um, in stages to Wellington and then maybe stop overnight and pick them and head off again. Yeah. Um, but it just it has that effortless quality of it, you know, with um, being such a smooth motor car that yeah. you can just get in it and drive yeah. a long distance with Enjoy the any journey problem. and yeah, yeah definitely. Drive all day, you know, if you're driving from Picton to to Methven, you know, it's a, a full day's journey. Yeah. And no effort whatsoever. Yeah. You know, just oh. waft, wafting along on <laughs> yeah. gorgeous Connolly leather seats. <laughs> on um on that note we're gonna jump in the Abarth and uh, go for a little spin up the road and uh, just get a, this, this is why I'm here really, is, is to experience the Abarth. Did we want to have a quick look at the 850? Oh yes, before, 840. Um, 840, sorry, 840. Mm -hmm. that out. Yeah, I can, <laughs> can Photoshop anything out. You're good at your job, but <laughs> is it a job? Not yeah, really. no. It's no, just not, a hobby. Yeah, it's just a hobby. Yeah. An 840. Yeah. Um, so, V8 engine version, yeah, as opposed to the 850. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd driven a few of the V8. Uh, sorry, I'd driven a few of the V12s prior to buying this car, and realised that the technology in the V12 was pretty dated and pretty a pretty heavy car to drive. So the V8s, you know, got 300 and something brake horsepower and. Uh, it's just lighter to drive, which makes it fun. Yeah. Uh, and it was classed as a big car in its day, but almost looks small. Now yeah, cars have grown. The average I know. motor car. That conversation yeah. comes up a lot, actually, because yeah. um, you could park this probably, next to it. It probably it is still quite a big car. It's just that it's such a low profile, perhaps that um, yeah, for the, a two door car. Is it? Did you say it's sitting a bit lower, as well? Well, yes, because this is a motorsport yeah. individual. Right, yeah. So, um, so the motorsport division um, did its magic by lowering it and course. doing the offset, the fat wheels at the back. Yeah. Um, lots of body kits, so the aerofoil's different, the body kit on the side. Um, and it's an individual, so it means that the first owner chose the colour, which is called Tobago Blue, and then also ticked the box and chose leather inserts to match that colour, oh, nice. um, blue carpet, um, I, I targeted when I was looking for one, because I spent about a year looking for an 8 series, um, and realised that the motorsport uh, just had that uh, difference about it with the body kit, um, side mirrors, you know, they've got those lovely little strakes mm. and tiny little mirrors, they just give a more streamlined look. Uh, as opposed to just the pretty standard rectangular ones on the um, standard cars. Yeah. So I, th I think for a lot of reasons they were hand-built almost mm. at the factory, especially when it came to the motorsport division uh, additions to it. Because mm. um, uh, obviously a lot, of, a lot of the body panels had to be you know, fitted uh, after the fact from the factory. Mm. <laughs> Insignia denotes the fact that the kit for the car that gave it all the extra um, braking, you know, with the uprated uh, drilled brakes, um, different wheels, and um, just basically a, an uprate on the on the engine as well. Yeah. And so 
in New Zealand um, you couldn't buy the kit to fit after the fact, so the, the factory fitted it prior to it being delivered to New Zealand. So that's why you get SASAs in New Zealand fully fitted out. Uh, Monza uh, exhaust, yeah. which I think, just for description, for the twin setting on it. Yeah. Uh, and then you get the drill um, braking, the Brembo brake. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's looking a bit dirty at the moment, I need to clean them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but everything needs cleaning because the weather's so crap. And, you know, there were lots of things like the aluminium um, pedals on the SASA, which was oh. part of the package. Yeah, yeah. So the SASA badge, um, again here, um, and the difference with the colour on the um, engine cover, um, the normal um, uh, horsepower versions just have a brighter red, and the SASA has this ra it's rather richer, yeah. sort of darker red colour. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, you, you, there's lots of little subtle differences. Um, and of course, it's a, um, a nice big induction with the BMC turbo. Yeah. And um, which gives it quite a big horsepower for a little car. What are, What is the horsepower on these? Um, they're rated, some, I think they're about 180. Yeah, and for, um, for, for so power, power to weight ratio. It's a, a lot of um, oomph. Yeah. Simply because, you know, the, as you say, the power to weight ratio. Mm. But they're pretty pretty um, solid little car that the um, that people say to me, oh, it's just a little, you know, baby. Yeah. But I think the thing is that they got the design right, right right from the word go. Yeah, yeah, that's um, quite quite intentional. Yeah. Exactly what they were going to be. And I mean, there's been a few things that I've I painted the lip red because um, it just needed that little extension of colour. Yeah, it looks good. Um, to it. And then the, the Scorpion vehicles on the bonnet and the body, really just to match up with the side skirt um, decal, which comes from the factory. Yeah. Um, and then with the Abarth um, versions, you usually get a coloured combination with the, um, the mirrors, etc. Just just for a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, and lots of badges everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> um, you know, you know what it Scorpion is. Scorpion shield, um, and so. Scorpions in the um, centre hub, uh, so not lacking in badges. Yeah. <laughs> but I suppose the thing is that it, it is quite a iconic um, design that scorpion with the um, the tricolour for the Italian flag as yeah. a flash door. Yeah. So. Doesn't feel at all. Feels quite sort no, of solid, it's on, solid the on the road. Yeah. Nice fat tyres help. Um, yeah. Because uh, relatively speaking, because they're only little wheels. Yeah. But um, you know, it's the, I suppose the tyre to um, body weight ratio is pretty high. Yeah. It's got a lot of grip. You can you can drive it into the corners because you know it likes to go. Yeah. Um, there is a traction control here, but if you you'd only use that if you were doing really tight turns and powering into them and out again all the time. Right. Because um, otherwise, you know, the feel through the wheel, you know, you, you know exactly where the front is. Yeah. So you 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 opt you have to opt to have the traction control on rather than it being the def um, well default. Well, it's not so much traction control as torque control. Oh right. Um, yeah, so the yeah. torque. Because it's front wheel drive, if you've really got your foot flat to the floor, yeah. um, it's going to set it up too much if you're in a halfway through a corner, uh, um, you know, and you put your foot down halfway through. It would 
talks to you too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they figured that one out, but you know, just general driving like this, no problem at all. Yeah. You don't need to worry. Yeah. But if you want to have some fun on some twisty windy bits, it'll just help you out yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the corners. Sure. Yeah. So you don't end up oversteering it. Have you um, gone very far in this? In sort terms of, of travelling? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I haven't had it that long. It's probably 12 months. So I haven't haven't done a big trip in it yet. The furthest I've been is to Helensville, um, to my um, sister's farm. Mm. And that involves going on Metal Road and so forth, and had no issues. Oh, yeah. Um, in fact, it loved it, you know. It, the big heavy cars on the metal roads, they don't like it at all. Yeah, front wheel drive can be quite fun on Yeah, it just, metal just handles everything as it should. Yeah. And here we go. Here's a goer. Watch out for the plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'd ban those. So it, it does have um, warning for changing gear if you want to do manual. Oh, yeah. Um, on your rev. Yep. But it, you know, it's just Im immensely sort of capable. Yeah. With all that power. Very smooth. And smooth. Yeah. So how do they do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great design. They got it right. That's the thing. And so the thing is, it's fun to drive. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's probably the, the whole basis of the car, isn't it? Yeah. It's fun, you know? Because it is a little car, and yeah. you know, it's not going to be something that you use all the time, perhaps, because it's not as practical. Yeah. Um, if you're a very practical person, it's probably not the car for you. No. Yeah. It's, it's more about fun and style. Yeah. yeah. Quite a smooth delivery from the turbo, so no lagging. It's yeah. just it's there when you want it. Quite sort of linear. Uh, it's a nice feeling when you're driving something that it's got that extra oomph. Yeah. It's a clutch. It's um, uh, you know, that's the the thing is that you're driving it like a manual in terms of especially at low speed. Um, and on an incline, of course, you've got to use your handbrake or your brake. Because right. unlike a, an automatic, there's no hold. Oh, I didn't a clutch. It's, it's, so it's disengaged. Ah, oh, so it's almost a bit like um, what's the BMW? Is the SMG yeah. box? I think sequential, yeah. manual. Um, yeah. So it's basically a. It's a clutch. A, a, a manual yep. box yep. with a mechanical Electron. electronic clutch. Yeah. And the thing is that um, probably in this car, it's even more noticeable. Um, that you you know you need to be aware of that fact. Yeah. Back yeah. again. <laughs> it's like American Beauty. <laughs> we should have filmed the plastic bag blowing around in the wind. <laughs> Caught up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are we in a real movie? This is manual button. So if I press that, you can do the. Popping in the yeah, back. a little bit of <laughs> popping in the back. I've heard that. So we're into we're into top gear quite quickly. So you don't sort of really need to use the manual, um, you know. But you can have some fun, obviously, because yeah. you can download it to get that extra boost. Yeah. Ah. And a bit of popping to wait the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's really that's. It's fun for about five minutes, and then you just stick it into yeah, you know, just automatic. Try yeah. And I think if you do the torque control, um, it's probably when you're using these, especially on a corner, um, that you'd really want it because you can power into the corner. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's smooth. Uh -huh. It's not not giving you that torque steer which you'd normally have with a front wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. 
but in the end you lose a bit of the feel out of the steering wheel. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if you're trundling along like we are, it's no problem because you feel the steering. Right. A lot of people prefer the manual change gearbox. Yeah. Um, but in the end, you know, this is as quick. Um, it's probably the fact that people like that extra mechanical motion. You know, driver involvement kind it's of. It's an, another personal yeah. um, taste thing. Yeah. You know, I think um, some of the output of modern vehicles now, the um, like the quicker is automatics. You can't, you can't keep you can't keep up manually. So a manual box be too slow. Yeah. Um, and the sheer horsepower means that, you know, you'd be struggling unless you were driving at 100% all the time. Yeah, you'd have to be a maniac. Concentrating. Yeah. Um, but that, that would end up being a bore and, a, and tiring. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just having to work all the time. Yeah. Sheer horsepower means that, you know, the, the transmission, the automatic transmission, is giving you all of the driving pleasure yeah. without all the hard work. Yeah, yeah. Especially if the electronics are balanced nicely um, and you, you know the 8 speed gearboxes and so forth these days are so good Hey, um, thanks very much, Bruce, for showing us your collection and your um, detail of yep. your uh, a bath. Very cool little car, very enjoyable. Um, yeah, so this has been another episode of Car Stories, and uh, if you liked it, um, give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back with more videos at some stage. See you later.